Did you know in The Dark Knight, Senator Patrick Leahy makes an appearance as the older gentleman that confronts the Joker at the party. Senator Leahy's been a huge fan of Batman for a very long time. He even arranged an early showing of the movie as a fundraiser for the children's section of the Kellogg Hubbard Library in Vermont. He's also appeared in Batman and Robin and Batman the Animated Series. Did you know in Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle? In the first scene with a hippo, it rapidly propels itself forward with its mouth wide open to eat Shelly. And later on, there are three hippos that do the exact same action from left to right to rear. When you put these scenes together, they form the Hungry Hungry Hippos from the board game. The second scene also mirrors the clever girl scene from the first Jurassic Park. And they even reused some of the locations in this film. Did you know in Spider-Man Far From Home? Peter Billingsley actually reprises his role as William Ginter Riva. William is a Stark Industries employee from the very first Iron Man movie. And since Billingsley is a close friend and producing partner of director Jon Favreau, he decided to come back. He's also known for playing Ralphie, the protagonist from A Christmas Story. Did you know in Alice in Wonderland? The extensive use of green screen frustrated the actors. Although Johnny Depp says that he likes an obstacle when filming, he's admitted that the process of filming in front of a green screen was exhausting and left him feeling befuddled by the end of the day. Even Mia Wasikowska hated the green screen. For the three months of green screen shooting, she had to try and keep the energy up and remember that there'll be an animated character in front of her. But it's hard when you're acting opposite nothing but sticky tape and tennis balls. Did you know in Spider-Man Homecoming, Tom Holland couldn't pronounce Spider-Man? His British accent made saying the phrase Spider-Man in an American tone incredibly difficult for him, as the Marvel star would find himself either reverting to his natural accent or going into an accent more belonging to the Deep South. For many scenes, the studio simply dubbed over the original pronunciation of the superhero's name. As aside from the title character's name, the scenes were otherwise flawless. The fact that this team's audio dubbing is so subtle that the audience barely notices that it's taken place is a testament to the production team's skill. Did you know in Deadpool 2, there's a scene in the Super Duper Cut where Deadpool actually pops his head back into place and says, Suck it, Mel Gibson. This is a direct reference to Mel Gibson's character in Lethal Weapon, Martin Riggs, who's known for popping his dislocated shoulder back into place on his own. Did you know in Man of Steel, the movie was distributed to theaters under the title Skyrim. Skyrim is actually one of the most popular single-player role-playing video games ever. Developed by Bethesda Game Studios and published by Bethesda Softworks back in 2011, it's considered a masterpiece due to its countless interesting quests, engaging combat, and stunning world-building. Over 7 million copies were shipped within a week of its release, and 30 million copies were sold across all platforms by 2016, making it one of the best-selling video games of all time. Interesting enough, Henry Cavill is a fan of Skyrim lore and loves playing this game. Did you know in Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, there's a flashback sequence where young Shang-Chi is playing Dance Dance Revolution with his parents. The song that's on is Butterfly Upswing Mix, but it can only be heard briefly. That same game and song are what plays in a cutaway scene in WandaVision, all new Halloween spooktacular, where Billy and Tommy Maximoff play it. Did you know in Shazam, you can actually see Mr. Mind in a glass display case when young Thaddeus Savannah enters the Rock of Eternity. We can see him again when adult Savannah reaches the Rock, but when Billy enters, the dome is broken and he's gone. Later in the mid credit scene, they confirm that he escaped during the battle between Savannah and the wizard. Did you know in Inglorious Bastards? This is the first Quentin Tarantino film to win an Oscar for acting? Christoph Waltz won the award for Best Actor in a Supporting Role. Interestingly, the role of Colonel Hans Landa, for which he won the award for, was originally going to be played by Leonardo DiCaprio. But Quentin Tarantino then decided that a German-speaking actor should play the part. However, at one point, Tarantino was considering abandoning the film during the casting search for General Hans Landa, fearing he had made a role that was impossible to play. But after Christoph Waltz auditioned, both Tarantino and producer Lawrence Bender felt they found a perfect actor for the part. Christoph Waltz, being a German-speaking actor, was the ideal choice for the role, and he even dubbed his own performance in the German version. Did you know in Inglorious Bastards? Tarantino almost choked Diane Kruger to death. In the scene where Bridget von Hammersmark was choked to death after being discovered as a spy, Diane Kruger was almost accidentally really choked. Unlike choking scenes in other movies, Tarantino insisted Kruger was strangled for real in order to get just the right scene he wanted. But fearing that Christoph Waltz would choke her too much or too little, Tarantino decided to literally take matters into his own hands and did the scene himself. Tarantino told the actress that he was going to strangle her for just a little bit of time to see the reaction on her face, and then they would cut for the scene. Kruger decided that this was reasonable and let Tarantino sit on top of her and choke her to the point of unconsciousness. 
Fortunately for Kruger, the shot was accomplished in one take. Did you know an X-Men Dark Phoenix? In the final scene where Magneto and Professor X play chess, James McAvoy could be seen wearing a Rolex Milgauss watch which is known for being resistant to magnetic interference. The Rolex Milgauss was first introduced in 1956. However, it was not until 2007 that it received its now signature green sapphire crystal, an exclusive feature that was originally introduced as a way for Rolex to celebrate the 50th anniversary of their Milgauss line. However, the movie takes place in 1992, and Professor X's Rolex is the recent version. So, this is either a continuity error or a blatant Magneto joke. Did you know in Dumb and Dumber, the movie had two alternative endings? In one of these endings, Lloyd and Harry were offered a job working one day a week at the Danbury Hotel, but they turned it down and rode away on their mopeds. In another similar ending, the concierge asks the two to stay with him and possibly look after his grandson, who turns out to be Billy in 4C. The blind child Lloyd duped into buying Harry's dead bird. Interestingly, during the shoot for the current ending, the studio wanted Harry and Lloyd to get on the bus with the Hawaiian Tropic models, but Carrie and the Ferrelli brothers refused, stating that the characters are supposed to be dumb. Did you know in 12 Years a Slave, the tree where Solomon sees several men being lynched from was actually used for lynching? This tree is located on the outskirts of New Orleans and was once used as gallows on which slaves were hanged, and is surrounded by the graves of murdered slaves. Before the Civil War, the city of New Orleans was the largest slave market in the United States, ultimately serving as the site for the purchase and sale of more than 135,000 people. This tree bears evidence to the vast history of violence associated with African American slavery in the antebellum South. Did you know in The Last Witch Hunter? Chloe convinces Calder to not destroy the witch's heart so that she can continue living at the end of the movie. Her reasoning behind this is explained when she says, besides, you still owe me $50,000. This is the film's version of a paraphrased conversation between Vin Diesel and Paul Walker in The Fast and the Furious, where Dom says to Brian, Besides, you still owe me a 10-second car. Did you know in Blade Trinity? Wesley Snipes sued the producers of Blade Trinity because he didn't like how they treated him. He claimed that he was harassed over his race, that the screenplay and supporting cast were forced on him against his will, and that he hadn't been paid his full fee for performing the role of Blade or been exempt from tax liability as promised. He also blamed David Goyer for the poor reception to the film. In the end, the lawsuit was settled out of court for an undisclosed sum. Did you know in The Cable Guy? The basketball dunking scene was an accident. When Jim Carrey's stunt double dunked the basketball, the backboard came crashing down on his face and chest. The backboard glass was supposed to fall backwards, but that did not happen. The pyrotechnics didn't work the right way and pushed all the glass the wrong way. So the guy got fired on the spot. However, in the actual scene, they ended up using the shot. Did you know in Turning Red? May's grandmother dislikes the number four and believes it to be unlucky. This is because when speaking Cantonese, the number sounds very similar to the word for death. As a result, in many East Asian cultures, including China, Korea, Japan, and Taiwan, the number four is considered unlucky. In these areas, if you step onto an elevator, you probably won't see a button indicating the fourth floor because most apartment buildings and hospitals skip the number altogether. In Beijing, it's not even possible to get a vehicle license plate that has the number four on it. And in Singapore, a luxury car maker had to change the name of the Alfa Romeo Model 144 because citizens were scared to buy it. It's the same reason Nokia and OnePlus phone models don't start with the number four. Did you know in Obi-Wan Kenobi, the final battle in Episode 6 is where Darth Vader tries to use the same move that Darth Maul used to kill Qui-Gon Jinn in The Phantom Menace. With that move, the opponent punches themselves in the face with their lightsaber, and Maul tries to use this against Obi-Wan in Star Wars Rebels. Obi-Wan anticipates the move and uses it against Maul instead. Did you know in Thor Love and Thunder, Chris Hemsworth ended up reaching his biggest physique ever for this film, and Chris Pratt was amazed by it. Chris Pratt mentions that Chris looks like a real-life man-god, and Hemsworth ended up getting up to 231 pounds for the role. His diet included eating eight times a day throughout filming to maintain the mass he gained.